When do we receive these blessings? How we receive them? And what these blessings are? So those are the three things I want to cover today. So we're going to look first at uh, when do we receive these blessings. Okay? Now I want us to go to the book of Ephesians, um, chapter, three, chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. Uh, and this is a wonderful part of scripture that Paul wrote to the Ephesians. Um, and um, maybe to make uh, time, I'll, you can follow with me on the, on the, on the screen. Uh, if you're taking notes, you can just note maybe the scripture. Um, but we would like to move a little fast. And this is what Paul says uh, in chapter 1 uh, to the letter to the Ephesians. He said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, when he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And then he continues. Uh, the one thing I want you to notice in this blessing, uh, that he says, Blessed be the God uh, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Now, the word spiritual blessing um, is probably a bad way of translating into English. The proper way would be to say, who has blessed us with the blessings of the Spirit. Okay? Spiritual blessings simply means the blessings of the Spirit. It doesn't mean these are blessings that are spiritual, whatever spiritual means in your mind. Okay? It simply means blessings of the Spirit. And blessings of the Spirit, of the spirit do not mean that they cannot be tangible. It simply means that they are given by the Spirit. Okay? So if somebody has a gift of singing, singing itself is a blessing of the Spirit. Tim, Tim talked about somebody giving him an envelope with 300 rand. That 300 rand was a gift of the Spirit because that person who gave that 300 rand was moved by the Spirit to do that. To give the 300 rand at that time was a move of the Spirit. And therefore, spiritual blessings or blessings of the Spirit simply means that these are blessings that the Spirit uh, gives. So, the first point, however, that I want you to notice here is that this is, these blessings were given to us before the foundation of the world. So even before God created us, his purpose and his plan was to bless us. Okay? So it's not something that after we're created, God decided then, maybe I must bless them. So before he even creates us, his intention was to bless us, to bless us before the foundation of the world. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, uh, Paul says the same point again to Timothy. He says, he indeed, talking about God um, or Jesus, was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Okay? So Jesus was purposed before the foundation of the world, but was only manifest in these last times for us. Okay? So before the foundations of the world were laid, Jesus was purposed that it is through him that we are going to be blessed by God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Okay? So he's emphasizing this point that the blessings of God and the grace of God upon our lives was granted to us before the foundation of the world. Okay? So the point I want to make is that we are not waiting to be blessed by God at some point in the future or by, after we've done something. We have been blessed before we were even born. Before the first human being was created, God had blessed us. Okay. So we were blessed even before we enter the scene. So that's the point I want you to understand. So point number one, you are already blessed. Okay. You are already blessed. But how do we receive this blessing? That's the second point I want to address. In the point, in the passage we read in Ephesians chapter 1, 3 to 5, it says, when he chose us in him, that is in Jesus, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. Okay? Now, before the foundation of the world, God proposed that through Jesus Christ, he is going to adopt us as his sons and daughters. 
Okay? So the only way we can share or receive the blessings of God is if we are his children. That's the first point that I wanted you to understand. That the only way we can access the blessings of God is if you are the son or daughter of God. Now you can only become the son and daughter of God in Jesus, who is the son of God. So apart from the son of God, Jesus Christ, you cannot become the son of God. So we are adopted through Jesus. Okay? So we are predestined to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to God. And that is how we come to share in these blessings. In the book of Galatians, chapter 4, he, same, he repeats the same thing to, to, to the Galatians. He says, but when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son. Okay? Now, why did God send forth his son at that time? He continues, so that we may receive the adoption. So Jesus, Jesus Christ came to earth and be born as a man to effect our adoption process. Okay? So Jesus came to be a man to sign, to sign the adoption papers, if I can put it that way. That's what Jesus did by becoming a human being, so that he can bind himself to humanity, so that God can call humans his sons. Because before then, God could not really call us his sons. Okay? Do you know why? Because, you see, when, when uh, it says Jesus is the only begotten of God, because every um, living thing begets only that which it is. Okay? Human, human beings beget human beings. Cows beget cows. Dogs beget dogs. Okay? So there was no way that human beings who are not God can be called sons of God. In the same way that even though you own a dog and your dog gets puppies, those puppies cannot be your children. Because they are dogs and you are human. So we could not be called sons of God and the only way we could be sons of God is if God, the Son of God, became a human being. So that the Son of God, who becomes human, makes it possible for sons of men to be called sons of God by adoption. So we were then adopted. This is what Paul is saying to the Galatians. That when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son so that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because we are now sons, he says, he continues, because you are now sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts so that we are now able to cry, Abba, Father. Okay? Now we are able to join Jesus Christ in calling God our Father. Before Jesus came, we, we were not adopted by God and we could not call God our Father because he is God and we are human. But when God, through Jesus Christ, became human, he made it possible for us humans to be adopted into this relationship of the Father and the Son and we could call it the sons of God. And we are now able to join Jesus in saying, Abba, Father. Which is why, for example, when Jesus teaches the disciples and asks to pray, he says, you don't say, Our God. You say, Our Father. Because now we are adopted into sonship. We don't worship a God. We worship our Father. And that's the point that he's making that. And then he continues to make the point. And now, if we are now sons, then it means we are heirs of God through Jesus. Okay? I want you to understand the, 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 the message that Paul is saying. So he say, Paul says, God sent Jesus so that we can be adopted and be able to call God Father. And therefore, if we are adopted, we call God our Father and we are his sons. It also means that we have become heirs to God. What does it mean to become an heir? It means that we are standing in line to inherit what God has through Jesus Christ. Okay? In Romans 8, I want you to notice, sometimes when you read the Bible, maybe you don't notice this. Paul has mentioned this so many times. This idea of our adoption and that we are now able to call God our Father, Abba Father. So in the book of Romans, he says to the Romans the same thing. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. 
You have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Okay? So the point is emphasizing, as we saw to the Galatians and now to the Romans, he is saying you have been adopted so that God is no longer God to you. He is now Father. So that now when you pray to him, you don't say God in heaven. You say Father in heaven. Because you see, when you pray to a God, you are not praying to the Father. The relationship dynamics between us and God has changed through this adoption. That we are now the sons and daughters of God. We are now heirs of God. We are now in his will to inherit all that he has. Okay? As he continues in verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if we are children, he continues, then we are heirs. The same thing that he said to the, to the Galatians. If we are children, it means we are, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together with him. Are you following me? Paul is saying to us, we have been adopted through the coming of Jesus into being sons and daughters of God. And when we become sons and daughters of God, we have a daily son-daughter relationship with God. And that changes the whole dynamic. That no longer are we on the outside, we are inside, we are part of the family, we are children of God, we are heirs to all his wealth and all what that he has. That's the point that he is making here. Okay? In chapter 3, verse 29, and it says, And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And if you are Abraham's seed, then you are heirs of the promise made to Abraham. Okay? So when God said to Abraham thousands of years ago, I'm going to bless you and give you a lot of things, he was saying that to you. Because he says, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And if you are Abraham's seed, then you are the heir according to the promise that was given to Abraham. Okay? Verse 6 of the same chapter, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Okay? Sometimes you may think, we used to think this way, that the descendants of Abraham, the Israelites, and the Jews are the only ones who inherit the blessings of Abraham. That's not what the scripture said. And this is what Paul is saying here in verse 6 of chapter 3 of Ephesians. He says, you Gentiles have been made fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. So the promise made to Abraham applies to you. Whatever the blessing of the Jews and Israel is, is your blessing. This is what Paul is saying. In Titus 3 verse 7, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Okay? So we have been made heirs together with Abraham and his descendants because we are the children of Abraham. Okay? Now our relation with Jesus Christ is therefore central to this. The relationship we have with Jesus Christ is central to our being adopted into children of God, into our being uh, uh, members of God's family that we are able to inherit together with that, together with him, all that. In the book of Grudem, Systematic Theology, this is what he writes about this idea of our connection to Jesus Christ and our relationship with him. He says, every aspect of God's relationship to believers is connected to our relationship with Christ. From God's counsels in eternity, past before the world was created, as I was saying, to our fellowship with God in eternity future, and including every aspect of our relationship with God in this life, all of it has occurred in union with Christ. Okay? So everything in our past, in our present, in our future, is, uh, is, with regards to God, is connected with our relationship with Christ. And in the Greek, in the scriptures, it is called an Christos, in Christ, union with Christ. Okay? And I'd like just want to make maybe one uh, uh, explanation of what our union Christ with actually means. Our union with Christ means that we are now sharing the very DNA of Jesus. Okay? When Jesus was born as a human being, I don't know whether you know that, that all human beings have Jesus' DNA in them. 